Welcome to Vibrational Revelations. I'm Elena Bensonov. I am Alejandro Ferraz. And today we have a very special guest, Dr. Konstantin Korotkov, somebody that I've admired. He probably doesn't even know that for years. I actually mm -hmm. have your BioWell uh, instrument and we've used it in analysis with a lot of our patients and clients before and after. Of course, now we've transitioned to online world and, and um the analysis is truly remarkable. Your work is remarkable. I've read two of your books. And uh, please, Dr. Korotkov, share your background, your area of expertise. I know you hold a lot of patents and you've lectured in over 56 countries around the world. And of course, one of the fields for you of expertise is quantum physics and biophysics. Yes, absolutely. So I graduated university as quantum physicist. <clears throat> for many years in Soviet Union, I was working in uh, quantum uh, technologies with different vacuum technology, uh, then uh, space technologies, uh, atomic physics. And then uh, in the 90s, I moved uh, finally to biophysics and to medicine. And then I dedicated my life more than now 30 years to human health and human wellness. And in this field, uh, I'm an international expert. They invite me worldwide to make expertise. I published many books on this topic. I'm a member of different scientific councils in different countries. So this is uh, my passion to give people understanding that life is a complex system. It's not just material. And uh, your life and your health and your wellness depends totally on yourself. That's the main goal of all my activity. That's beautiful. A uh, couple of things I know, I've listened to some of your talks in Russian language, which I we oftentimes talk about your work in our community. So I know that our members are so excited and they want to hear everything you have to say. One of the topics I wanted to discuss with you is something I heard you speak in, in one of the Russian interviews where you looked into, of course, a soul, and you looked into what happens to a human being or human soul if they die upon uh, from natural causes or from instant, let's say, car accident or somebody who commits a suicide. Could you please describe the difference of what happens to a human being and what are your findings in that area? Yes, I mean, we did this type of research uh, not many years ago. But it was uh, by that time it was possible to get access to different, um, I would say, people immediately after their deaths. And uh, I was working in a big uh, medical institution with a big group of medical doctors, uh, professionals, and we did analysis because for me it was a long idea. If we can study uh, human energy during lifetime what would happen with this energy after death? Would it be some change or not? And you know very well that by different physiological parameters of the body, it is possible for criminologists to define the moment of death. For example, if you are measuring temperature, if you are measuring blood viscosity, if you are measuring some other parameters, you can define what time was coming after death. Because all those parameters, they have slow declination. And uh, that's why it's very well known, very easy publish. So my idea was as follows. If we look for dynamics of energy after death, we would be able to see whether it is declining process, and then it will be the same as all other physiological parameters, or it will be something different. And we had a group of professionals who will be measuring energy for dead people every hour, 24 hours per day for seven days per week. And then we were able to make graphs, dynamical graphs. And it was found that those graphs are really different depending on what type of death uh, was for people. When it was calm death, predicted death, uh, age of death, then it was really very slow defining graph. Or as it was with all other physiological parameters. When it was death in the accident, when people was full of energy, full of plants, and they were coming, 
or driving the car, and then some accident, and they die practically immediately. So they have no time to understand what's going on. When you're a car crash, you don't have time to understand. You see that, oh, something is going on, but what's happening? Same as, uh, same as when people hit by a car. And in this case, uh, it was like a firewall of energy coming from people, but for short time. As, as, as if, you can imagine, as if you have uh, some um, uh, big uh, bottle of water and you make little hole and water just one thing and then it's empty. And in case of bad type of death, murder, suicide, suffocation, uh, we had many cases of this kind, it was variation up and down, up and down. So energy did not come down for a long time, for, for quite a long time. And it was clear that it's really some process that we can find. And it's, of course, it wasn't one case, it was many cases of this kind. Later on, we were able to repeat some of those experiments. And again, we were able to see those up and down process. So it's clear that human energy, it is not just physiological parameter. It is some uh, parameter related to our spiritual side, to our uh, uh, mental side. And after death, uh, this process is going on. And that's why after death, it's not the end of our thinking, it's just a threshold. Mm. That's great. And I think somewhere you were saying that uh, for the people that committed suicide, for example, their energy lingered for 30, about 30 days, right? So that was the average that you saw. So, and it brings us to the question of, if you want to describe what is biofield, because oftentimes we talk about it or the human energy field, would you like to describe perhaps uh, from your point of view, how you see that? Now we have scientific definition. What does it mean biofield? Biofield, it's a complex of fields uh, created by physiological activity of the body and by interaction of a person with the environment. So those are two sides. One, of course, activity of heart, brain, organs, muscles, and that we can measure by electroencephalogram, neogram, cardiogram. It's absolutely understandable. Another, it is our interaction with the environment. We are open energetic system. We exist because we accept tremendous amounts of information and energy every second. And we give out this energy and information. Uh, to make it clear, I can explain it very easily. Our temperature is uh, 36 degrees and 70 degrees. So this is plus something, if you don't have parallel lines. <laughs> and uh, it means that your body is much more warm than all environment in most countries. So it means that you heat environment. You radiate your heat. And what is in heat? It electromagnetic radiation. So you emit this radiation. It's only one little part. Plus, of course, another very simple topic is smell. Mm -hmm. You know that any dog can smell any person and define person by smell. What does mean smell? It's emanation. Emanation of different organics. Another topic, we all emit photons. And it's proven, we can measure it with our instrument, bio instrument, with other instruments. So we emit photons. And photons, again, this is a type of radiation, this type of field. Plus, one very important topic of our biofield, it is quantum part. And now it's a lot of data, a lot of discussion about uh, quantum fields and informational fields, you can name it differently. And we are part of global information field of humankind. Would you say that that is another term for it would be the human collective field? Yes, absolutely, just to... Just another term. And how would you correlate consciousness to, in your definition, consciousness to this biofield? 
and and beyond that. So please, uh, if you can elaborate on the term consciousness. Um, well, um, when we talk about consciousness, I always ask the first question, okay, let's define what's the difference between my consciousness and consciousness of my cat. Because no doubts that cats, dogs, birds, they have their own consciousness. More than that, every plant has its own consciousness. Every cell has its own consciousness. So, in one of my books, I proposed a very simple principle of the levels of consciousness. So, if we talk about levels of consciousness, we understand, yes, every plant has consciousness, every flower has consciousness, every cell has consciousness, and every cell in our body in particular, but those are just different levels. Dogs, yes, they have consciousness, very well developed. But still, it is much lower than our consciousness. And then, even with our consciousness, we have consciousness of some outstanding people, and we have consciousness of holy people, of great teachers of humankind. And all this is a part of the consciousness of the universe. So, our consciousness is tremendous power. Of the universe because it's a part of the universal function. Mm -hmm. Same as we can tell that our soul is a glimpse of the soul of the God. Mm -hmm. Yes, beautiful. You know, we've been exploring different layers of consciousness. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Of course, we gave you your numbers of different human beings, of historic figures, of animals, of plants as well. And we absolutely are finding uh, different correlations and um, uh, of course many many differences because every human being comes with their own signature and their own way of expressing it what is interesting that we've discovered and then of course we were so happy to find your work and and some of the things you talk about which brings us to this what we call spiritual bypassing a lot of people want to spiritually bypass to have this experience using, as an example, would be psychedelics. And what we've discovered is it actually creates interferences in the field. And I wanted to know from your perspective, what have you discovered when people are using psychedelics, whether it's mushrooms, ayahuasca, whatever it might be, because it's a huge trend right now, but we're discovering that it's creating massive long-term imbalances in the human energy field. And I wanted to know from your research, what are some of your findings? You see, uh, with this uh, psychedelics, we have two sides, as in many other poses. Uh, first of all, they allow people to get out of their current. Because most of people, they live in the very deep current of their own mind. It depends on upbringing, it depends on the environment, it depends on all their life. And they live like in a jail or little cubicle. And they are used to live in this cubicle. They used to operate in this cubicle, it's very convenient. But this creates for them a lot of problems. First of all, psychological problems, problems in their life. They don't develop in this cubicle. Because this cubicle doesn't allow them to get out of this, look out of it. So for this type of people, using psychedelic allows them to get out of this cubicle, to feel themselves free, to feel themselves independent on their situation, you know, their environment. It's the same as with all this pandemic situation, when we all was put in some cubicles, in some restrictions. I wasn't allowed to do this, 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 and this, but then the only solution was to come inside you, to you. So don't have these restrictions inside yourself. So this is very positive side of this psychedelics. That's why a lot of people use it as an exercise to show them that they can do this. And then in their everyday life, they remember this experience and try to do it. It's one side. Another side, of course, for some people, it's just transition to illusory world. 
transition to the world that is far away from their reality, that allow them to drift in some dreams, in some imagination, and not to be related to what they have in their own life. And it's the same with drugs, it's the same with psychedelics, it's the same with very popular now, marijuana, same. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and again, it all depends on the level of your um, spiritual growth. If you are spiritually grown, if you have this your own level, then of course, this experience may be interesting for you. It may help you, but it's not your uh, life. It's not the only way how you want to live. But if people don't have this experience, if they just live there, uh, simple situation and don't want to make, make any efforts, then for them it's the way how they get out of reality. It's the same as go to the movie. Yes, you can sit in the movie for two hours or before you stay, you watch some stupid movie and you don't think about this. Same story. Mm -hmm. And we unfortunately, for a lot of people, this is the way how they want to be. Yes, because I saw one of the images you had is a flash of opening of a flash, opening of the field, auric field. And what we've discovered with Alejandro testing many, many cases is, yes, your field opens, but not only do people have good experiences, but it also brings negative forces into the field itself. And it's what we call the hijacking of the field. Uh, where we see it very clearly. We and can see, we can see an uh, electromagnetic field or the aura field, right? And the person becomes uh, vulnerable. Yes. And the slow vibrational entities turn them into their host. And so the, the temporary uh, solution becomes a long-term um, problem in a way, right? I agree with you 100%. It's very well known for us that when you make your field open to new energies, it may be positive energies and negative energies. When in classical tradition, uh, in authentic traditions, they make this ayahuasca ceremony or peyote ceremony, it's a whole tradition. Mm -hmm. And it should be some guide, some shaman, uh, some brujo uh, uh, who would lead you. He opens you and then he closes you. That's how it should be done. And if you look to the books of Castaneda, it's a whole library of books describing this. But when it's done on mass production, without thinking what it's all about, without understanding the principle, then of course it may be easy. People just use a tool without understanding what it is for and how to operate with this. And then of course we know it's many different situations. Right, because it has become a trend more for the sake of profit. Uh, they, their intention is to create codependency, you know, and that worsens the situation because they feel like they, they keep experiencing uh, themselves trapped in that cubicle, as you mentioned. And, and they're told that, oh, you have to let the plant work through you and you have to keep doing more journeys, you know, and, it, and it's an unending uh, journey, right? It gets worse and worse. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It's uh, the type of uh, sect that now we have. Mm -hmm. It was always uh, like this. It was always religious sectants. Uh, now this is a new type of sectant. Mm -hmm. They have strong leader. This strong leader may have many followers around him or her, and then uh, they can lead people whatever. You know that in Russian uh, history, it was some uh, period of history in uh, 18th century when uh, our Russian Orthodox Church was divided to two parts. It was official part, uh, supported by the government, and this part was part of the government later on it became, and it was old church. And old church was following the uh, Jesus Christ traditions and they've been independent from the government. And government of Peter the Great, they start destroying this old church. So all people who was in this uh, part, and Russia, they are known like 
Raskolniki. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were coming to uh, the special church of their own, and they burned themselves. Mm-hmm. It was hundreds of people in one church who burned themselves not to follow this uh, new church. So it's the same Tekan tradition. It was some spiritual idea for people, and people was following their leaders to death. Very similar process to have We have some strong leaders who take their followers and they bring them to, not to death, of course, but to uh, follow to call the uh, spiritual destruction. Mm. Interesting. You know, some of the things that we've discovered, and I want to bring this topic up uh, because of the, your expertise in quantum in quantum physics, is we're finding that biofield, what we call the biofield, the human energy field, is like a record keeper. That's what we're realizing. That's exactly what it is. It keeps or holds all of the information, events, situations, emotions, whether it's of that person or of everything that exists in the universe. And we're, we recognize that it's absolutely possible to retrieve this information, whether it's past or future, because it's all happening in the now. And I wanted to hear you talk about this biofield as a record keeper, if this is something that you've noticed, that information is available to be retrieved at any moment. It, it is all a matter of knowing how to retrieve this information. Yes, you're absolutely right. In the biofield, we uh, keep information about all our past. Of course, we can speculate about future, but it's very difficult to test. Uh, so, and uh, if you have this ability, you can retrieve this information. I had many uh, people, I knew many talented people who were able to do it, it's very high precision. And I know many cases of this kind, same as it's possible to communicate with a person after this, so biofield still is kept even better. So that is why it is really possible. And in our biofield, we keep all this information, all those things. It's not a story whether it is kept only in biofield or in our memory or in every cell of our body, you know, this uh, all the stages of transplanted organs and memory of these transplanted organs. So that's a very interesting uh, question. But now we have a lot of evidence. It's not just speculation. It is clear evidence. And in medical literature, they discuss the stages of uh, transplanted organs. Because it's clear that this exists, not every, in every case, but in many cases, they do it. same as reincarnation memories, they do exist. Look to very big uh, uh, bulk of scientific papers on this topic. So there are no doubts that in the information of field, <coughs> in the individual biofield, we keep information. We keep track of what was going on, and maybe we have some glimpses of the future. Mm-hmm. Yes, because future is all about different probabilities of, of course, the choices that the person makes. Yeah, because yeah. in the future we have uh, this uh, a process of uh, different options, different probabilities. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, why that's right. you just define us. It is a bifurcation process. You go to one point, you go left or you go right. You go to the next point, you go left, you go right. And that's how it works. And then, of course, it depends on different, many different situations. Mm-hmm. I have a quick question. In reference, what is your feeling about um, when two people that are interacting have a, they're not in alignment when it comes to vibrational and speaking, and they they they're vibrating at totally opposite uh, extremes of the spectrum. Per se, one is vibrating at a very low frequency, and the other person is vibrating at a high frequency. If they are if they are uh, interacting um, often. Will, will their fields be affected or impacted by the opposite? But uh, no, that any interaction of people, of two people, those are interaction fields. When is that? Mm-hmm. that is why you see one person and you feel your attraction to this person. Mm-hmm. You see another person, you are distant. 
for children, it's absolutely. Children, babies, they are so sensitive to this. And, but in different age, we have different frequency. And a different frequency have a most important role in different age. That's why for young people, they are lower frequency, the most important. That's why they may be attracted to each other by this lower frequency. And they feel this attraction. And that's why uh, so many young couples, they uh, stay with each other for many years, but then they divorce, they separate. Because at next stage of their life, they transform to much higher frequency, and then they feel that their frequencies are different, totally different. So it's not that this person good or that person is bad. No, no, no. But those people are having different frequency. It's absolutely clear. Plus, you are absolutely right that, of course, one person can totally grab the frequency of another person. It's, again, it's absolutely clear, no doubt. And uh, with strong field, it's very easy to uh, suppress weak field, very easy. And again, there are many, many people who use this principle. Yes. So it is all interaction. And uh, that's why even with our instrument, we can see this interaction. And we can see how people interact with each other in their biofield. Mm. Mm. What I noticed also, and perhaps I'd love to hear for, from you, is the biofield usually is the one that needs realigning, and then it's easier for the physical body to begin to heal itself, because we innately as human beings have this ability to heal ourselves. Divine intelligence. The, but it's about realigning. I always say it's about realigning the field with the physical physical body, of course, eliminating toxins from physical body and all these interferences but also making sure that the field and the physical body are in sync. Where do you feel the healing takes place or where does it begin? Would you say the biofield and then the physical body or? No, it seems to me it's inseparable. Inseparable. Yeah, it's a part of uh, our system and we mm. have just different levels of our existence. We have quantum level, we have a level of fields, biofield, we have chemical level, and this is the level of our pharmaceutical medicine. We have level of organs and systems, symptoms. So those are just different levels, and it's impossible to tell which is most important. They are all important because mm -hmm. it's uh, just like uh, you can't run your car if you don't have a gasoline, and you can't run your car if your engine is broken. And at the moment, it's, you can't run your car if you are not inside, if you're not driving. Yes, take care. So yes. for me, from my point of view, it's impossible to separate our biofield from our physical body. But you are absolutely right that all problems, they start from the level of quantum field, from the level of biofield. This is the lowest level. And at this level, the body starts its own healing. So if we operate on this level, we can really solve a lot of problems for people. Mm -hmm. and all healing powers, they operate just on this level. I did many studies on top level uh, sensitive people, top level healers, and we found, yes, they operate just on this level, either on biofield level or quantum level. Those are two different modalities of healing. And of course, then the body follows up. Mm -hmm. And body just heal itself because uh, our body is not just uh, a response of uh, chemicals, but it is complex. Mm -hmm. Body can resolve uh, all problems uh, if it ready to heal itself. If we change our thoughts, the thinking process, right, and process all the uh, unprocessed uh, emotions that are that were imprinted in the in the biofield that are impacting the physicality. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, can you say, can you because we know what the difference is between biofield and the quantum field? Can you please define that for people who are listening? The difference, the clear difference between the two. So quantum field is 
quantum heat, it's a part of fire. As I've told in biochemistry, we have different layers, different fields, different options. Quantum forces, those are forces on the level of subtle energy, like the energy of photons, energy of electrons, and energy of different part of particles. And a quantum field, it's not um, logical. It's not linear. It follows absolutely different laws and regulations. So we live with our physical body in Newtonian law. That may be explained by the laws of Newton and uh, our classical physics. Uh, quantum world, quantum field, it's absolutely different law. It has absolutely different principles, different laws, and uh, it's not logical. But it's a part of our reality. And uh, now we have no doubt that our consciousness operates on quantum principles. That's why when we talk about information field, we know that it has the properties of quantum field. And that brings us to, I want to ask you about scalar waves and how are scalar waves, uh, perhaps for, for the listeners, how are they intertwined with quantum field? They're part of quantum field, the biofield and our physical system, if you want to touch upon the scalar waves. You, I know what it's all about. Uh, from my point of view, scalar waves, it's just one of the interpretation of quantum field uh, equations. Because uh, those are Einstein equations that may have different interpretation. And if you resolve this, you come to some uh, physical situation. Because in quantum physics, uh, before you uh, define the uh, quantum uh, equation, quantum function, uh, it, nothing exists. It's only probability. So, so scalar wave is one of the de, um, uh, decision of this equation. And it was uh, just became popular because uh, it allows to explain some uh, phenomena. But uh, I had discussion with many top level quantum physicists. They don't think that quantum uh, scalar waves is something like that. There is something what? Something spe special. Something, something special. It just is. It just yeah. is. It's just it's one of the main decisions that became popular because of some uh, people who, who was able to present to public. So it's not professional topic. It's more like Okay. Okay, great. Another question, and I know I've seen uh, with BioWell some of the research you were writing. For example, you can tell right away, of course, you can do this through kinesiology of muscle test people to see if a product uh, is, or let's say medication will be interfering with their field and also the physical system or enhancing it. Um, so would you say that you see that in the field itself or, or is that, as you say, it, there is no separation because if the field is impact, the physical body will be impacted as well. You know, with our instrument, bio, we are measuring photons uh, and electrons coming from the fingers. Yes. And we have different uh, ways of interpretation of this information. So uh, we complicated mathematical processing, non-linear processing, and we are measuring the level of stress. Again, for us, it's evaluation of, um, I would say, non-linearity of your of your emanation, and it's uh, it was very well, well tested in many different cases with uh, many psychologists. There are many papers published on this topic. So we are measuring this level of stress initially, and we do it from two fingers only. So we measure. Uh, I can show you. Oh, 
So this is our uh, classical byway, byway. And with this, we measure first one finger, and then we're measuring second finger. Then I take something in my hand. Uh, for example, I take some medication. Mm -hmm. And I apply it to my heart chakra. And I repeat this measurement with another finger. Then I change my hand, and again, repeat measurement. So this way, we see a level of stress initially, and we see level of stress after we are measuring, I'm keeping with something in my and in the back nearby my child. And this is interaction of my energy field with the field of this particular body or particular stuff. It may be medication, it may be some uh, products, it may be some jewelry, it may be some oil, whatever. Because anyway, our field immediately responds to us. As I mentioned before, we are open system interacting with environment. And as we interact with something, we immediately respond, whether it's good for you or bad for you. And there are many sensitive people who feel what is good for you, what is bad. And then we see that if level of stress came down, then it's really positive for you. If level of stress came up, then it's not so good for you. This technology was developed by Dr. Michael Bork in the United States. He's top level endocrinologist, he is kinesiologist, and uh, he's tremendously talented. And after many years of work as um, a kinesiologist and an endocrinologist, he transformed to bio. And now he's measuring all his patients only with this approach, because this allows him to have uh, as, um, um, track of what is going on, not just in his uh, imagination, but to see objective follow up of all these measurements. So this is really very, very good technology. And now we have a new instrument, this one, you see. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. no, it's absolutely new. It is by, well, mobile, we name it BVM. You see it's new size. I mean, it operates with mobile phone. So we have all the problems on mobile phone. And you can take this type of measurement in any place. You can go to department store. You can go to, uh, to the store of supplements. And you can test, you see, for example, we have 10 bottles of vitamin D. Which one is good for you? Mm -hmm. Excellent. It's great. This oh, one, yeah. it tested very easily. And it connects to the cell phone, you're saying, to the mobile phone, so people can instantly see it. Oh, that's excellent. I love that's it. Excellent. <laughs> we love, we love uh, the bio. Yes. So we have this uh, all tested in our laboratories. Now this is the process of production. And uh, we plan to have it uh, uh, on production line by beginning of uh, June, somewhere in June. And then uh, we have it uh, represented to public. So now we have this. Uh, all system is ready. You see on my mobile phone, we have all oh, the yes. aura field. Yes, aura field, chakras, chakras, chakras. chakras. then uh, rest level, energy level. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So, this is something people will be able to use on their own. Yes, right. so my idea finally, I was able to be instrument available for people mm -hmm. because our professional instrument, of course, it's not cheap, it is for professionals. Plus, it is very complicated to understand what's going on. Here, it will be very easy. You have your energy field, you have your chakras, you have your stress level. You can follow up day by day. You can see your response to everyday situations, what's going on with you. You can see how you respond, for example, to a particular type of food, how you respond to stress, how you respond to exercise. And that's why it's the same as we have now Apple Watch. Which mm -hmm. are you can take your uh, measure of your pulse. Right, right. But pulse, it's only one uh, indicator. It's important, but it's only one. Also shows you the energy reserve as the as the uh, bio world does. Well, sure, sure. Because That's okay. great. All the, okay, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. We I can think... get that from your website as well as yeah. Yes, of course, of course. 
okay. We haven't been there in a while, but we should. Be yes, back. I'm sure lots of our our listeners are going to immediately want to go and buy this because <laughs> we've been we've been. Oh, by June. Okay. Oh, okay. Excellent. I have a quick question. It, it is based on. Will you say that it is uh, based on frequencies that the uh, electromagnetic field recognizes what is actually an alignment uh, with, uh, rather or not an alignment with the product that, that you're testing? And then, you know, so if I say yes, it's vibrationally in alignment with it. And if it's no, of course, it's out of alignment. Now, if you, if people that don't have access to this tool, they actually uh, consume products that are out of alignment with, with their biofield and they're vibrating at extreme low frequencies. Would that, you, th you think, uh, um, will affect, impact their physicality in the long term, especially when they have to um, implant something, per se, that is going to remain in their physicality for, for years to come? Yes, you're absolutely right. Now it's a lot of uh, different process, different uh, technologies in the world. And uh, of course, when it is uh, necessary, then it's necessary. For example, if people beef and they have cochlear implants for hearing, then of course it's obligatory. Mm -hmm. For them, it makes absolutely new type of mm -hmm. When people need heart transplant or liver transplant, then of course it's another story. It's mm -hmm. about if and several more extra years. Right. But now you're right, it's a lot of discussion about different uh, implants for different purposes uh, and uh, even creating your own mobile phone inside. And this, of course, uh, to my mind, it's very funny and negative process. People don't understand what they do. They don't understand the danger of all these situations. And one way, if you want to help um, people with uh, low abilities who lost some function from their body, then of course it may be a tremendous. Effect. For example, for people who lost their vision, to create for them artificial vision through uh, cameras and through implanted uh, uh, chips, then of course it creates tremendous effect. So it is a uh, tremendous development, I would say, in science, with all these implants, human implants. It is tremendous development of um, diverse between biology and technology. And you know that now it's a lot of uh, research in uh, biotechnology that may be uh, created for uh, humans. Um, and so I'm absolutely sure in 50 years, it will be part of our everyday life. Now it's a part of research, first research. And as in any research, it has positive side and negative side. It's obligatory. When we're developing something, we have to understand it may be used for positive and it may be used for negative. So it was always so, and it will be always so. Wonderful. Okay, one last thing, one last message about humanity, perhaps that you have for the world. What is this one thing that you want people to, to know? Okay, as uh, we always discuss, we live in a very complicated time. Uh, last year was the year of total change of all structure. Now, as I mentioned, we don't have institutions. We don't have human rights. We are, we may be blocked and arrested at every step. And it's all some pretense. Mm -hmm. It's talking nonsense. So uh, I don't want to discuss about this coronavirus. It's not a story, but I want to tell that a lot of people, they're afraid. They're afraid of this, they're afraid of that. Uh, they are afraid of uh, being uh, uh, freedom, being free. But the most important message, don't be afraid. Try to live free life. Try to enjoy your own life. Because 
uh, of course, we may be restricted to go somewhere, but we are not restricted in our spiritual development. We are not restricted to accept music, to accept beauty of the world, of nature. We are not restricted in our intercommunication. So, please, don't be afraid. Enjoy your life, and your life depends only on yourself. That's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I have okay. one question, if I may. Yeah, this... um, what can you share uh, uh, with us about free will? What is your point of view about free will? Mm. Free will is an option at the point of bifurcation to choose a uh, direction which you want. So point of bifurcation is where you come to some point in your life. For example, uh, one young uh, girl, she uh, decides whether to marry this guy or that guy. Free will, if she decided by herself. Absolute free will, if her parents thought, okay, this guy is good, we need to marry this guy. Let's forget about that guy. That's the absence of free will. So, of course, it's simple <laughs> definition. But for me, I mind it's... Uh, and uh, we created by God uh, with free will. That's why I have so many positive processes in the world and so many negative processes in the world. So we are not just put on some track where we need to go and go only up. No. We go up and down. We have different forces in this world. We need to fight with those forces. We need to follow some forces. And that's our free will that helps us to choose where it's possible or we need to just to follow and uh, uh, to, to accept it. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your work, thank you for sharing, and thank you for being here with us. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you.